Alright, all right, rolling. All right, Sam, thanks for coming on today. Really appreciate your time. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> no worries. Okay, uh, I got a bunch of stuff kind of just lined up to ask you. Um, hopefully, most of it's correct. I got my, my sources were mainly like YouTube, some stuff on the Dang Camp. Like, there's a lot of stuff out there, so that, that was good. So I was able to catch up on some of that. But you keep me straight. If I've missed anything, just let me know, all right? Um, all right. So firstly, Sam Alajiki. I thought that, I think that's an incredible name. You got a really cool name. Just to say <laughs> it, I'm pronouncing it correctly, Alajiki, right? Yeah, Alajiki. Yeah, okay. Um, and what was I going to say here? Yeah, so as I said, I'm going to try and keep this episode a little bit quicker than, than the, the ones I've done previously, just to be a little bit snappier, because been some, some of them have been gone for an hour and a half, and people just don't have an hour and a half to give. So I'll try and get through a bit quicker today. Uh, right, we're going to start off with your... Actually, you know what I'll start off? You put up a Twitter video the other day, uh, and I, I saw it, and it was quite impressive, and it was like a Kiss the Ring video. So for any viewers that are watching... When you get up and your head gets at the rim and, and you're pretty much touching the rim with your head. Um, and then I watched your highlights uh, for the Canterbury Crusaders. Yeah. So this was the academy that, that you've been at before you went to the States, which is where you're at now. You're in West Virginia at the moment. Correct? Yeah. 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 So, so, and I can see from that video, you were, you were clearly able to jump before you made this video. So it's not like, you know, I, I don't know whether you've improved it since or you've got a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to get into your kind of jumping workout or what do you do to help that uh, in a little bit. But uh, has, it, has your jump improved since Brack, or is it Bracking Abbey or is it the Ken Crusaders? Because I kind of have you down on the Dane camp as, as Ken Crusaders, but Bracking Abbey is listed on the Dane camp. So I'm just kind of confused here. Oh, uh, yeah. So I went to Barking Abbey from September to December before I came to the US, USA. Ah, so you went from, you went from, uh, what's the other one called? C Canterbury Crusaders to Bracken yeah. Abbey, and then Bracken Abbey through to, to uh, okay, to the States. Ah, gotcha. That's quite a little, yeah. quite a little jump. You go, there's always more steps than you think. Okay, go, cool, go. Cool. So uh, you started off, okay, we'll come back to the jumper thing. We'll come back to the jumper thing. You started off with Dundalk Ravens. Yeah. All right. Probably when I was about six or seven, yeah, in primary school. Six or seven? I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't make the school team, so I I went to, you know, the club. Okay. I, I mean, I was just having fun. I was still, like, a big-time football player. So, <laughs> yeah, the basketball was just something on the side for me, but I think I had more fun than playing football, so, yeah. yeah was, it, was that what attracted you to kind of the tempo of us? Because you your style is very up-tempo. You, you got a lot of pace to your game. Is that kind yeah. of, yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm starting to slow it down a bit just because, you know, you just need to play at different speeds in America, so, yeah. Yeah, you have to have that half-court uh, tempo as well. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think when you're younger as well, there's a tendency, under 16, maybe at that age, a lot of it's just kind of, it's not breakneck speed, but it's kind of frenetic. It was a lot of a lot of transition and as you start yeah. to get into the into the kind of college game or you start to see this yeah there's more half court sets but i mean you can learn that part that's the part you learn right um, yeah so your first coach was uh fu fapito was that the guy who was in charge yeah fu yeah he was always in charge from the north ravens right right since i was in primary school to today he's still in charge so and did you learn much from him? Did you kind of get yeah. much of in terms of basketball? I mean, I think he was the the one to make me, you know, love the game. Like, just, like, when you're a kid, you just want to have fun. And, like, basketball was just a lot of fun for me. So, yeah, yeah he just made me love the game. Okay, well, I mean, look, you can talk about all the stuff the different coaches teach you, but someone who gives you a passion for basketball, that's all you can ask for. He's like a Fijian guy from California, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think he's Fiji. That's what, well, I just talked to my coach in the Super League, Darren, and he knows him. Um, and he said, uh, a bit of, is there a bit of feedback on the line, by the way? Can you hear some crackling? Uh, I think it's all fine for me. Uh, let me just fix this. You can hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you pretty good, yeah. Okay. 
And uh, all right. Okay, so you started off in Dundalk Ravens. So how did you make the jump then? Was it through like a national team or how did you kind of end up in the uh, I guess you would have went to Canterbury next, right? That would have been your I know actually so my mum moved to England to work, so she just she took us with her, you know, because she thought we'd have a better education. Ah, and okay. it worked out. So I mean, our first year in England, I lived in Essex for a year. Uh, I didn't play much basketball until the summer. That year, I only played football. And then, yeah, and then when I got to Kent, that's when, like, I was in an academy setting, and I didn't know I was going to be in an academy setting for for football and basketball. <laughs> and I ended up, you know, just... I, I had a talk with the coaches, and I think it was best if I played basketball, and that's paid off, obviously. <laughs> but, yeah, so from there, I started taking basketball seriously. All right. So you would have been a six foot seven. What position did you play in midfield for soccer? A soccer, back then, I was like six four, six three. I, right. I played striker, and I played like a bit of center mid sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You could be an incredible footballer. I don't know. But... <laughs> given your leaping ability, uh, I think you made the right choice. And what, what, what you're doing now, I mean, it looks, it's pretty, I think you definitely made the right choice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so let's talk about like the EABL. Because uh, I was in, the, as I said, the UK. Uh, I played in the BBL, I played in National League Division One and National League Division Two. I'm getting some weird feedback from my earphones. I don't know what that's about. Um, it's not your side, is it? I'm not sure. I'll just, uh, is it okay. my ear? For, you know, I don't know. Ah, uh, okay. Can you, as long as you can hear me, it should be fine. So yeah, uh, I knew about the EABL and then some of the guys that were playing, for example, Barking Abbey had a team and I played for, there's a team called Greenhouse Pioneers in, in London. Yeah. You probably, yeah. probably know those guys. Yeah, I played for yeah, them for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. We may have even played against each other. I don't know. <laughs> At some point, <laughs> a few seasons ago. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I, I played against Bracking Abbey quite a bit. So, like, you, you could see the talent there in, the, in those academies. So, there was, like, uh, Bracking. I know Myerscoff exists. Uh, I don't know some of the rest of them. So, I know there's Plymouth as well. How many, like... Like, who's the top six academies in the club? Do you know, like, because you played in these leagues, right? Or was yeah, that hard You don't want to call it towards the base, but I mean, <laughs> I'll name the top six in my head top, right now. Top five, top five, top four. Even. All right, so we got Barkin, right? Mindo, right? Charmwood. Um, Charmwood, where's that? Which one's Charmwood that? is in Leicester. Ah, right, okay. Like, Leicester Riders, they have an academy, and it's called oh, Charmwood. Leicester Riders, right? Okay, yeah. 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 Um, Ipswich have a few good guys. They've got they've got a high major guy called Ethan Price. Okay. He's All pretty right. good. like a nine kind of wing. He's he's really good. Um, so that's Ipswich. Ipswich are Ipswich were Division Two NBL when, yeah. when I was playing in it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they yeah. have an academy as well. Bloody hell. Yeah, they've got an academy as well. Oh. Um, and the last one, I don't, oh, I'm gonna have to leave <laughs> someone out. Is there one in Scott? Is there one in Glasgow Rocks or anything like that? No, they don't have. One. They probably do have one, but I don't know about it. Okay. I, I feel like my final one would have to be Reddit. Reading, yeah. Oh, uh, Reading have one as well. So a lot of them are actually kind of linked to like NBL Division One, NBL Division Two clubs, like these. Yeah, uh, most of them are. When I was in Canterbury, I played Division Four. <laughs> That's but terrible, man. That's a terrible level. <laughs> yeah, but I was like 15, so I was fine. Right, I actually right. had like a 28-point game. I bet time. you did. <laughs> like, dude, M MVL Division 2, no, well, with respect to it, is, 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 it's not uh, I mean, it's not bad, but like, yeah, I know what you're saying. 28 yeah. points at 15. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a good game for me. I mean, in the first half, I scored two, and then third and fourth quarters, I just... Kept going, so kept going. <laughs> yeah. There. So like the, that that uh, academy setup over there for for like let's say if there's younger Irish kids watching, it, would you would you agree or would you like advocate that it's a great avenue to try and get into because there's a lot of good you, you're playing against like, I mean it's as good as it's going to get in the UK and Ireland as far as I'm concerned because I've seen the players there the young players yeah. um 
and you see the opportunities that they're starting to get from Barking Abbey and uh, like a, a, any of those academies now, right? Myers Cough, all of those top academies. So is, yeah. would you say like as, a, as, as even a young Irish player to try and maybe get to get over some of those academies? Because we don't really have that. I, I, I know NABA exists. But um, a bit of feedback there. Uh, like we don't really kind of have that um, set up apart from maybe NABA, which again, yeah. I don't know if a lot of Irish players end up getting brought into that one or how it's working. I don't know much about it, to be honest. Uh, I, I saw mean, did... a lot of us just come in and out of NABA to work out and stuff, you know, like just get uh, our working. Yeah, it's right, pretty good. Okay. But like to your question, um, yeah, it depends on like who you are. Like if you're CJ Fulton, like, right. I'm staying in Belfast until I have to go to prep school because everyone around me is committed to getting me better. If you have somewhere that everyone around you is committed to getting you better, then that's obviously going to be, like, your best bet. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, that's what I have here in Beckley. Like, all the coaching staff are, like, trying to make me an NBA player. So, like, right. that's what I needed. Right. But it, it really depends. Like, if you've got a coaching staff willing to put everything into you, then... Yeah, go to that place. It doesn't matter if it's in that's, uh, South okay. Dublin or if it's in Cork. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a great way to look at it, though, actually. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. Like, if you got people around you that are willing to push you or to get you to where you want to go, go to that yeah. place, wherever that happens to be. Yeah, and I guess you have to put your trust in them, obviously. But, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the best idea. Yes, interesting, because I was going to ask you about CJ later, because obviously you know him from the national team stuff. Uh, yeah. So did you have an option to play for the UK? Like, could you or no? Um, so what happened is that... By the way, by the way I'm to... delighted you're playing for Ireland. <laughs> <Just to say laughs> that. But it happened, you know the kid called Jeremy Sir Sirkan? Sirkan? Yes, I, I do, yeah. I've been watching so basically the same thing happened for me to him. Like, they just didn't help us get our passport so we couldn't play, basically. Wow. I mean, they probably tried to, but okay. I don't think Basketball England holds enough power to, you know, to make that happen. do something like that. I mean, if it was like England football, I'm sure I would have had my passport by now. But <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, because basketball doesn't, it still doesn't have that uh, gravitas, that kind of, um, yeah, hold that sway or have that power. That's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah, Jeremy Soshan, I think, I, I mean, like, there was a massive switch there because he was like, oh, I'm not going to go to college. I'm going to go to the Orange, uh, the club in Germany, the uh, Orange. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, right. I think they're connected to, like, a, a BBL uh, club in Germany. Um, yeah. So, which would have been an interest because it's, like it's like a farm team that they use to feed, feed young players into, like, their Eurobasket, uh, the home team. I think they play in Eurobasket. Yeah. So that would be like a good alternative option for going to America, but now he's committed to Baylor. I thought. I thought. I said yeah. That a bit. He was always of... going to go to college. All oh, right. So okay. So he would have done a year there and then just would kind of left. Yeah. I That's what he's going to do. I think they're pro A in in Germany. Yeah, they are. And and Baylor now have the number one recruiting class in class of twenty one. Really. Yeah, a five star just committed to them yesterday. I think. Okay. And yeah. okay. Okay, we'll come back to that point in a second. <laughs> You've been keeping a close eye on it, obviously, with, with your situation. Uh, okay, right. So we got as far as Dundalk, and then you went to. So you were actually attending Canterbury Crusaders Academy. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so I had another question here. So, yeah, we talked about the fact that, like, it's. It might be good for an Irish player to go to like play for an academy in the UK. But you say, as you say, for someone like CJ, maybe it's best to stay in Belfast, play in the Super League for a year like he did. He had a great year in the Super League. He got yeah. Young Player of the Year. He had 27 against us. <laughs> so I blame him. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a very talented player, man. Um, I think the one thing I was concerned about when we went to play against him, this, I don't know what's up with this microphone. Having some feedback issues. The, thing about, um, the one thing about CJ was when I when I first played against him, I was concerned about his his physicality, right? But uh, there was really no issues. Like there was no point at which I thought he's losing out. Now, 
maybe maybe when he goes to the prep school, he's going to have some some more stronger guards and stuff like that. But like he he managed against American guards in the Super League, and they won they won the league. So and as he yeah. played against us, and our Americans a strong American good defender, Josh, um, and and. Yeah, you just you get 27 against us, so I, I don't see it as a you know, I was worried about how that would translate, but I don't see it as, a, as an issue. I mean, every time I, I come back home and see him, like he's always bigger and stronger. I don't think he has an issue on the defensive side of the ball, I think it's, he's fine right now. In America, obviously, he'll get stronger. Like when I came to America, I gained 25 pounds, so yeah, true, yeah, so. Like, yeah, it's gonna happen to him. Like, he's on the right path. I think he's doing a great job right now. Yeah, I I saw him. Uh, we went, had a summer run there, um, and he came down, and uh, I was still telling him to just just put on a bit of size. <laughs> I was like, it just just uh, you know, you can always be working on your strength. He doesn't have to go and get huge. He just get, needs to get a progressively stronger. And I think he's aware yeah. of it too, and he's like, yeah, I'm working on it, working on it. So that's that's cool. I'm trying to get him on the podcast, but he's kind of avoiding. It. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but he said uh, we're going to play one on one, and uh, hopefully he beats me. And but he's still going to come on. Hopefully he doesn't. <laughs> so uh, okay, so I'm just trying to go to the next part of your journey. So after that, you jumped to Bracking Abbey. Then was it kind of just for like a little bit for a couple of months? Um, yeah, it was just like. So what happened is. I was going to go to Beckley in September. Right. Gotcha. And then I chose to like stay home. Gotcha. And then I was just looking at all the guys in Beckley, like, like picking up a lot of Division One offers, stuff like that. I was like, okay, I think the best bet for me to get recruited is if I play in a prep school. Because right. they, they had a lot of players, like there was this kid called Cam Sit. He had like five high major offers like probably like 15 division one offers he was like the fifth ranked player in north carolina so i was like okay if i can play in the same gym as them when the college coaches are watching then i have my best chance to you know pick yeah. up some more offers that's smart so that's yeah. what i did yeah that's a good move um yeah because you might have thought like maybe maybe this isn't the best move like you said where's the best place for me to be get the exposure and get the people around me that are going to actually develop me to become the player i want to be yeah, um, you're six foot seven. You're athletic. You, I mean, I've seen your highlights. You got good hands. You can shoot the ball. You got good handle. So I think yeah, you made the right choice again. So good move. Um, so yeah, okay. There was something else. Oh, Den Camp, right? So here's your here was your vitals from Den Camp. I went on your page. So you get six. Oh, man. Den, Camp. I, Den Camp, yeah. So this is back in oh, 2000. Sure. 2019. <laughs> oh man. Good memories or bad memories? Uh 50-50. Okay. I'll give I'll give you the vitals, right? You're six six seven. Your wingspan seven two, is that right? Yeah, seven two. Wow. Okay. My brother's like six two and he has a seven foot wingspan, so I think it's just an effect. <laughs> right. Because that makes a difference, right? Because uh, I I'm six six, right? But my wingspan's six six. So I'm literally proportionally perfect, which isn't great because I'd prefer to obviously be longer. But uh, like if I put up my hand with a six four guy who's got like, and then all of a sudden they put up their hand, they got a really long wingspan. It's like that. So actually, the point of release for like a dunk or a block shot is actually higher. So sometimes it's like when you say you're a certain height, if someone's got a longer wingspan, it actually obviously is is is, uh, is a, a big advantage. And for like defense, blocking shots, all that kind of stuff. So it's just it's just interesting. Seven two wingspan is is legit. That is huge for a six seven guy. Um, yeah. So it says your vert's thirty nine inches. I know we don't to focus too much on the vertical, but like just interesting. <laughs> is it more now? It Have you checked? Like, um. Yeah. I checked. I last time I checked it was forty two or forty three. Okay. But in day camp, they they didn't like they didn't let us run up. We just had to jump straight up. to be stationary. And then jump up and hit the thing. Yeah, but that's not so how that's you test it. In, in like a combine, that's not how you're going to test it. So that's yeah, I know you're supposed to be standing a max, but like there's there's just too many players to you know. Uh, there's okay. only one only one thing, and there's 50 players, and we have to do it all in like two hours. Yeah. So 
Yeah. I mean, it's still a pretty impressive thing that they do, like, and it gives a lot of exposure. And as somebody yeah. said said recently, like a lot of those guys have ended up in the NCA at some level. So it's a great uh, thing that the wall set up. Um, yeah, I think it's amazing. Like, I, I, I mean, still wear the backpack every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, you got number two in the camp. You're listed as yeah, Dan is Irish nationality. So what's your heritage? Is it Nigerian heritage? What's your your heritage? Yeah, both my parents are Nigerian, but they moved over to Ireland in 2000. Okay. And then they had us, and then yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Nigeria, I got had a few Nigerian buddies. You ever heard of P squared? P squared, yeah. Yeah, I know those guys. I'm not, I was going to sing you one of the songs. Is that I better not because I'm on a podcast. <laughs> if, I ever, if I ever meet in real life, I'll sing you one of those songs. I used to listen to Peace Squared. I had a Nigerian teammate in Germany. Uh, I played in the Pro B League, and one of the guys was, German, was uh, Nigerian, but born in Germany, raised in Germany. So he kind of had a, Niger, uh, a Nigerian kind of heart, but uh, a German way about him as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, um, so you got you made the camp all star team. And yeah. The, the kind of uh, weird feedback is. It, do you don't know if it's happened on your side, Sam? That's giving feedback. I have no clue. I mean, I think I can. If I disconnect my iPhone, I can switch this to my airpods and I'll take away the feedback. Yeah, maybe try that just in case, because I don't know if this has been picked up in the recording. Okay, there. Yeah. There we go. I just switched to mine. Yeah, let's see if that works. Um, I just switched back, so maybe should be fine that's, now. Oh, maybe that's better. Okay, cool. Um, so the camp, you got the camp all-star, you got, we, I don't know if there was an official award for this, but Hello? You, can you hear me? Can you hear me there, Sam? Hello? Can you still hear me? Yeah, let me just do this. Sam's just left. He's, he's back. He's back. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, um, sorry, it's just it's just a perk of living in West Virginia. We just I just got Wi-Fi outage. Ah, cool, cool. No worries. Uh, okay, all right. So we were saying, yeah, they kind of called you in the description, most athletic player in the camp. Uh, they said you're. They said well, this is a year ago now. And they said you're. Impro- you're trying to improve your jump shot. Um, is that something you're like more focused on now since you've been to America? Like your jump shot. Like for as far as I can see the highlights, you were, you were able to shoot. You had pretty good form. But is that something now you think you're working on more? Or I mean, I think right now my jump shot is actually my biggest strength. I, I mean, I shot 43 percent from the three last season since coming to America. So. And I was shooting like five or six a game. Oh, right. I mean, I worked on it a lot when I was embarking. Like, I had a coach called Coach Ricky completely changed my form in the space of three or four months. And yeah, he really helped. So I think my jump is a strength of mine. What I'm really trying to work on now is like my handle, making decisions off the pick and roll and stuff, like just becoming a real point guard. Right. Okay. So you're going to go for the. That, that you've jumped on onto one of my questions for later is that's your kind of goal is to potentially come come into the point guard spot, good vision. Um, not for co- I think for college I'm always gonna have to end up playing the two or the three. I mean I I want to be able to jump into the role if I can, but just for my team next year it's just what I have to do. What you have to do, I got you. Cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. I, I, another thing I noticed. Yeah, you got you got the number one highlight dunk. It was like yeah, two hands, one leg through the middle dunk. There's a f- couple of guys. I don't, think, I don't think he quite caught a body, but there was two guys jumped anyway. And he, <laughs> he came through the middle. It was a nice dunk. It was a nice finish. Uh, and you got like placed like sixth overall in the camp. Is that the bit you were like, uh, like? Uh, I don't. 
Exactly. I don't really care about it. Like, this yeah. is what I say. Like, look at the player, look at the production, look at the offers, and then put them in order because that's what matters. I mean, I care about what the college coaches think. I don't care about, yeah, I don't care about what they think, really. Yeah. And, and, and anyway, it's all subjective at those camps. It's yeah. Not, like, it's not the opinion of, yeah, exactly. Um, but a lot of the camp is like what team you get put on. Of course. Like, a lot, a lot of guys on our team really, like, we felt, I, I mean, I started at number nine in both classes. So that was probably like number two in my class. And then as the camp went on, just because of how our team was built, it was just, we just went down and down. Same, Sammy Pajana was on my team. Yeah. And he started at 10 and I started at nine. And I ended up at 15 and he was 16 or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's it's kind of probably just as well, like you said, what team you play on, and how long does the yeah. camp go on for? I don't actually know that because it never. I think it's three yeah. days. Okay, so it's, it's not days, yeah. it's not a huge amount of time to, but I I still like the idea they're just trying to give it like a rough, but yeah, you can't go off uh, necessarily because it's a bunch of yeah, it's a bunch of people making a decision on three days worth of basketball. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's still a good, like I said, it's still a good tool to expose, you know kids here and to give people a look from from America or wherever's wherever the coaches are looking. Um, okay, so I've got another one for you. Um, your strength workout for younger guys in Ireland again, or even in the UK, because um, some because again I've got some people that watch us in the UK. Um, you know, explain for you the importance because for me it's something that in Ireland particularly, I think in England it's it's getting better and and you're kind of catching up with the US, but I think in Ireland particularly, there's still, I'm seeing the under 18 guys, for example, uh, not necessarily you now, but like some of the, 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 the other Irish kids that just are not really getting into that S&C stuff. How much has it helped you? Because I can see you put a focus on it. It's like I messaged you about saying like, you can see you're lifting, you're putting some work in there. And for me, as a, as a, as a guy who, who played at a decent level um, for, for, for a, a time, it hugely helped me massively helped me in every single way so i just wanted to get your opinion as someone who's now been working on that and looking to go to a high level uh how much has it helped you like how, how much has it helped you i mean for me it just my main the main point of my strength workouts was just to keep me injury free and like you know okay. in the in the position with the least chance to get hurt and just okay. you know core strength and stuff just to work on my finishing and stuff but like being big wasn't really my plan it, it was just like I wanted to jump high and not be worried about anything if you know what I mean right like if I land weird I'm fine because I'm strengthening from ankle up so that have, you was... found, have you found it's helped with like the consistency of your jump shot like your your ability to play defense that kind of stuff like even even getting the ball in the post defending in the post if you have to do any of that, like being more physical with guards, that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, th there's a lot of stuff that it helps in my view. Um, that if, if you haven't yeah. done it, that you don't know that it can help it until you actually do the strength training. At the end of a game when you're tired, you can still go up and, and, and contest shots and block shots. Like those kind of things when you're, when you're building up your body like that, it, you notice the difference, right? You're, at the end of a game, you're not, you're not, your legs aren't gone. You know, you're, you're, you're still able to be strong in the post if you're in the post. Those kind of things. Do you, have you found yeah, that? Right. Yeah. So I'm 6'7 and 225 pounds. So in high school, I'm usually the heaviest player on the court from one to five. So there's zero mismatches for me. Because most <laughs> times I'm like from the gym, I'm quicker than the point guards and stronger than the centers. So right. like, I can guard one to five. I can be guarded by one to five and not have a problem just right. because of the strength I've built up over like the last five years of me really lifting and putting in work. Okay. Yeah, which makes sense, right? Um, which actually leads me on to another question. <laughs> but before we get to that, I have a question around that because, I mean, you're playing, so you were like, as you say, the biggest guy on the court. So when you go to uni, that, that might obviously it's going to change, right? And then the athleticism is going to, like you've probably already seen it, right? Like, so we'll come to that. That's probably the next question. Um, well, actually, just on your workout stuff before we move off that. Uh, so give us a, 
so what do you do? You do like deadlifts with the trap bar. I saw you doing some of that stuff on, on Twitter. I mean, I can walk you through what I do like on like a, a normal day yeah. if I'm fresh. Like I would usually stand off with some hand cleans. Okay. Usually just so like get my whole body into it. Then I would move on to yeah, trap bar deadlifts. Uh, Tramp- I would do trampoline. Yeah. No, trap bar. Oh, the trap bar, yeah, 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 that's yeah. Right, yeah. And then I'll move on to some regular deadlifts. And then I would do some good mornings or some seated good mornings. Yeah. And then I would end up with like a, what do you call it? A, a Bulgarian split squat. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, but I'd probably load up like probably 80 kilos on a split squat, not too much. And then, yeah, that would be, that would be like a normal day for legs. But then in between, I'd always be doing like I'd foam roll, ankle activation, stuff like that. Ankle flexibility and mobility, hip mobility too, just to keep everything open and fresh, really. Yeah, okay. So you do the hip mobility. So I was going to ask you, do you do mobility stuff? So hip and ankle is the big ones, right? Um, so yeah. That's generally the two. Uh, do you do like the weighted hip thrusters? I've seen some of the NBA guys. I don't never done them, but they seem to be. Folks, it's like almost like glute, glute strengthening stuff, like your posture, your chain, that kind of stuff. No, I I've never, I've never done a hip thrust before, actually. But you've seen them, you've seen them do it, right? You've seen them do it with yeah. the, the weight of the bar. My, my old SNC coach Tony, like, had most of the guys doing hip thrust, but I just wasn't one of those guys and never did it. Ah, okay. And what's the trampoline about? Do you actually use that? Because I saw some NBA guys working on trampolines because it takes the load off your joints and stuff. You haven't done any of that, have you? I mean, I, I bounce around. I mean, we have a weight room where we've got a trampoline, so sometimes I bounce around and stuff. Like, there's this really weird thing. If you go on a trampoline for, like, a minute and try and dunk, <laughs> you're not going to be able to dunk. I mean, oh, I can dunk, but most of the guys can't dunk after they've been on a trampoline for a minute. Probably because there's no... It takes away the... You know, like uh, I'm just trying to say, it absorbs all the kind of force yeah. or something like that, right? Because I've been on a trampoline recently and it just seems to take all of your I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> I know what you mean. I can imagine yeah, I that would happen. To you, but my legs just turn into jelly after that's all I know, right? Okay, um, okay, so you're you then took your move to Beckley Prep, so I think you kind of explained how you how you made that move. Um, so you got an offer to kind of go there. Was that pretty much the, the deal? And then you, you weren't sure. And then you kind of said, actually, I'm seeing these guys getting really good looks from it. And if I can get yeah. in the gym with those guys, then that makes sense. So I'm going to go move. Okay. So yeah, the thing is that we had a, we have a national high school team yeah. and a post-grad team. And like both, both teams had like prospects, you know, ah, right. it was like, we could play an open gym with all the prospects, so all the colleges interested would watch the open gym. So mm-hmm. I had like the maximum amount of colleges watching. Wow! So there's two teams, and they got a the post grad and then the actual school team as well. Wow. Yeah. So is there two different coaches? Because I saw the coach Cortez Brown. Is he the main? Excuse me. So he, he's the main coach of the post grad team, and then we have um, Coach X Holland like Xavier Holland and he's our assistant and we have coach Justin Dempsey who runs our national high school program yeah I've seen the Xavier Holland on Twitter he's just like tweeting out some of the about you guys and um, seem to have a good squad there guys that are just trying to do the same thing which is which is cool um so what's that level like versus the EABL that's what I wanted to ask you well what, how would you like, this is a common misconception, like, about American basketball. Like, people right. don't know there's three completely different levels. Like, if you're playing varsity and you're playing, like, single A, double A, EABL is much better than single A and double A varsity in West, in West Virginia. But in right. other places, in, like, North Carolina, there's no, no competition. Like, some, some varsity teams, like Farmville Central is one. They would probably kill. They could probably be a lot of NBL Division One teams in England. Like they're that good. Then there's a lot of then high school national level. That's like your Moravian Preps, your Sunrise Christians, your La Lumiers, your Oak Hills. Those are all okay, national. Yeah. That's the level I play at. Right. Which okay. is 
which is so high level. Like they always produce NBA players every year. Like right. there's a kid from Moravian Prep that we played against. His name is Josh Hall, and he's just declared for the for the draft out of out of prep school. Out prep school. Right. Yeah. Is is the rule still in play? You got to go to college, right? It is still that's still there. Isn't it? He ha- no, you have to be one year removed from high school, so you can take a year on prep school. Uh, right, of course, because that's yeah, a, that's what like Lonzo Ball did. He went to Australia for a year. Yeah, Lamelo. Yeah. Or sorry, what did I say? Lamelo. Yeah, Lamelo. Um, yeah, yeah. Lamelo, and there was another guy actually from high school that went to Australia that same year. Yeah, Arthur Hampton. He went yeah, there too. That's right. His, yeah. his kind of jumped off them because he didn't perform as good as Lamelo yeah. did. Yeah, he did. But, yeah. So and the then there's the post grad level, which is like your Scotland campuses, your Beckley preps. Okay. I don't. I, a lot of teams have both national and post grad teams as part of one. You can you can kind of switch players into stuff because there's no like eligibility rules when it comes to post grad and um, national high school. But there's eligibility rules when it comes to like varsity. I'm not allowed to play varsity because I'm an instant international right. student. Uh, Unless you have like a foreign exchange program where you get adopted, then I can play varsity. But <laughs> get adopted. <laughs> a lot of kids get adopted here to play varsity. No way. Yeah, That's... A lot of kids. Wow. But uh... I don't think my parents will let me get adopted. So. No, I was going to say, <laughs> they'd be like uh, legally removed from the family. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's crazy. I actually didn't know that split. That's interesting. Uh, it just shows you the what they're willing to do to get like so you could actually do let's say you were in the actual preps uh, berkeley uh prep the high school team and you could do another year in the postgraduate team yeah if you didn't get the offers you wanted or wanted to get more exposure or something like that or i could reclassify to 2022 and just i wouldn't have to postgrad to reclassify right now okay i could just do my junior year again and then be in 2022 but Okay. I mean, it's an option, but I, I don't think I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. I guess if you if you have the right like option on the table, there's there's no need to do it. I suppose. Yeah, but some sense. guys need to get ready in the gym, in the weight room, you know, before college. But I think the best thing, I think, if I didn't need to get ready, I just redshirt a year in college, and then I think that's the best thing to do because they have more tools to get you better quicker. Yeah, great thought. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I kind of, you already covered, I had one question around like how many guys are going to like D1 in your school, like, you know, high majors. I, I know you said uh, one of your mates there, is it Sandy? I can't even pronounce the second name. Yeah, Sandy Jai. Sandy Jai. Yeah. yeah he's say, the West. say it slow again. <laughs> Was it Sandy? Sandy Jai. Jai. Okay. So he's committed to West Virginia University next year. Senegalese Heritage. Um, yeah. And uh, is it Jordan McCabe plays there, doesn't he? That, that uh, yeah, Jordan kind of, yeah. So he's like, uh, I suppose he's just like a, a well-known name because he, he was just, I don't know, he was he had a lot of video on him in high school and stuff like that. Yeah. He's a nice player, like he. he yeah, he I actually met him in January. Oh, did you? Cool. Yeah. He's at the Steph Curry camp. He, he, uh, I saw some videos of that as well. He's pretty cool. I mean, he he is nice. He's a nice player. Um, I saw that he went to West Virginia, and then just then it came up on on there. Uh, so, and then I saw you got you have like offers from New Mexico, uh, Princeton, uh, St. Mary's, Stanford, West Virginia as well. Um, so, like Princeton, like Stanford, they're really really good academic universities. They're yeah, Ivy my, my parents are really into you know academic academic side of things. So, like most Ivy League schools and high academic schools are usually going to be the ones my parents are most interested in and interested in calls with and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're looking to balance, balance the academic side as well as as well as the basketball. Um, yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah, and I saw, uh, yeah, I talked about the Jordan McCabe, Bob Huggins for West Virginia. So West Virginia are ranked just below Baylor, the 24th in the US, and they're in the Big 12. So that's, that's, that's huge. You must have been delighted to get an offer from there at least at the moment. They they haven't offered me as of now, but uh, I'm sure it's going to come soon. Okay, so they're just chatting to you at the moment. Yeah. Ah, right, cool. Okay. Um, and if you go, so let's say, forget who where you're going for a sec. So you turn up. Are you aiming to play? You kind of mentioned this already. You aiming to play at the two three spot? Is is 
wherever they need you, like you said, like they'll have an idea. But you yourself, you naturally like to play at the wing. I mean, I could play at the wing. I could play at the four if like needed. I mean, I'll be out on the three point line if I'm playing the four, but I can still play and guard that position. So, yeah, yeah, I, I really can just play one to four. Yeah, I know the new school kind of philosophy is like uh, positionless basketball. Um, and I think you fit that mold perfectly because you, you're a mobile guy, but you've got size and you've got length. Um, so that, that makes sense. Um, okay. So, yeah, I just like as I was saying before, you got a nice jump shot. Uh, you look very balanced when you shoot, which is a great sign. Uh, you can take off, off both feet, one leg. So I see you dunking off your right foot. <laughs> off and your left foot, even though you, you would naturally jump off your left with your right hand player, right? Yeah. You, you're taking off off both feet, which is uh, nice to see. Um, yeah, just I mean, I was impressed with your game. I was really impressed. I mean, you. most of the time when I take off my right foot, it's just because I didn't get the footwork down. But, <laughs> yeah, you seem I mean, to go off. I noticed your highlights when you, when you go to the rim on the right hand side, doing my scouting here. Uh, you took off off the off the off leg, and it kind of it. It's tough for the defender because it's kind of off timing as well. So you take yeah. it off a little bit, a little bit early, which is actually a good thing in a way. Um, so yeah, and then uh, okay. So this is the this is the bit I was getting to. So, okay, so you go down to college. Okay, you hit a three, and then uh, next time you beat your defender because he does a hard closeout. So what does Sam do when there's like a six eleven long athletic defender coming over? Are you working on like a floater at the moment, like like a Jordan McCabe floater? Or like, are you doing like a pull up, or are you going to do like a euro step, or have you thought about like how you're going to, you know, deal with that kind of size and that athleticism because it's going to come, you know, it's going to come, right? So you're starting to look at stuff like that in your game now. Do you think you're prepping for? Yeah, that? I mean, if I feel like I have a step on him and I can go off one foot and jump quicker than him, I'm going to dunk it on him. But if he's already in position, then. I've been working on my pull up all summer from you know around that free throw line spot. So I'm probably gonna pull up because people aren't gonna block it because I have such a high release point. Okay, yeah, you do shoot actually from quite high up. Okay, I like that. I like that. Cause that's common. I tell you, when I got a shock when I went to Germany and there was a six eleven dude on the on the course, and he was just putting my stuff off the board on bank shots, and I was like, oh, okay. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, just like, yeah, you just, you, all of a sudden, you're not the most athletic guy. Uh, yeah, you've obviously kind of already seen that, even probably at the prep level, there's some, some big guys. Um, but yeah, that's good that you're kind of aware of it and you're going to like, you know, get that worked into your game. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I saw you at the, the NABA playing, for, I think you said you jumped in for the NABA team at the Harris Memorial Tournament. I saw the highlights yeah. of that. You kind of looked like uh, LeBron playing in high school or something. It was just you're kind of bullying those kids. I was like, okay, Sam, I understand. <laughs> I was like, this is not fair. Who, who were the teams? And, uh, like, were they all the same age as you? Like, yeah, same they were. I mean, there was Manchester Magic, MySco were there, Global Squad, which is a AAU team in America, Elite oh, Academy man. out of Belgium, ha Harlem Lakers out of the Netherlands. Okay. Us. And, and Charnwood Riders were there too, so it was 18. Okay. okay, right, cool. So there was some like European competition there, some, yeah. some decent teams. Yeah, you're, you're, you're bullying people for fun there. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, it was fun, fun to watch. Uh, okay, right. Uh, I'm doing all right with the time here, 45 minutes, so I'm, I'm very happy with myself. Uh, I'm going to give you 10 questions. I call this hard in the paint, so we're going to go quick, just some, some flash answers. Uh, and then we'll just go with, go with that. Uh, I, I'm probably going to hopefully hopefully we catch up again next year or something like that um, just to see how you're doing. Uh, so we're going to go with 10 questions. They're not going to be that hard. <laughs> just, just call that hard on the paint. So we'll just go go quick. Okay. Um, I was going to start off with how many offers have you got? You probably haven't counted. I don't know five. You know. I've got five right now. Five yeah, right uh, now. 25 inches. Uh, okay. Off. okay. Right. All right. Gotcha. Uh, did you get any offers or did you consider even going to Europe, like into like an Orange Academy or anything like that? Like a Jeremy Solskjaer, what he was going to do? Yeah. Um, I considered going to GBA Academy in Czech Republic. The funny thing is that we actually played them in a, they came to America and we actually played against them and we beat them on a game winner. 
Right. So there, <laughs> you know, Obi from the under 60 national team? Yeah. Obi, yeah. he actually goes there. So okay, right. it's a good program. Okay, so that's obviously, yeah, it's an it's an option, I suppose. It doesn't mean you have to even consider it or whatever, but it's an option. Uh, yes. Do you, Do you enjoy playing defense? Yeah, of course, hundred percent. Yeah, good. No, that's good. No, some guys will just tell you they don't. The NBA people, <laughs> say they don't. so that's good that you do because obviously coaches love that. But it, it's also like you look at it like a challenge. Like you know, you want to mark the best guy. You want to block shots. I mean, it's just pride, like. I don't want you to come past me. Like I'm better than you, so you're not getting past me. That's good. I like to hear that. And for me, anybody who's competitive, they want to compete on both ends, right? It's not just I want to go up and score. It's like when you come down, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you score. So uh, that's a that's a good a good answer. Uh, who do you like in the NBA right now? Who, who's the guy you like? Who's My you like favorite player, uh, probably the Marta Rosen. Really? <laughs> it was, I've not never heard anyone say Demar Derozan, and that's not to say he's not a really nice player. Like he can do everything, like two legs, one leg. Like he's just a scoring machine, mid range. He's such a mid range guy. What news is that? Thirty years, the three's a bit shaky, but he's still my, he's still my favorite player. Yeah, but does he need like Mike? Let's be honest, the best player to ever play. Well, in my view, the best player to ever play. I'm a different generation. You might be a LeBron guy. Are you a LeBron guy or are you a Mike Mike guy? Uh, MJ. Uh, <laughs> uh, LeBron uh, guy. I actually haven't thought about it. Probably, I'm probably a Michael Jordan guy. I mean, yeah, probably a Michael Jordan guy. That's that's right, Sam. You got that right. <laughs> um, yeah, but like he could shoot threes. For, well, he could, but like that wasn't his game. You know, that wasn't what he was yeah. trying to do. Uh, Dwayne Wade arguably could shoot threes, but didn't really shoot them. So some of the best players, mid-range guys, because that's where the they create the face, and that's where the that's where the space was on the court, so arguably. Uh, do, you, do you enjoy defense? Oh, yeah. So what does Sam, you kind of covered this, what does Sam Alajiki 2.0 look like? You said like handles is one thing you're going to work on? Yeah, handles, just changing speeds. Like, I want to be able to come off a pick and roll and make a decision and it be right every time. Even though that's obviously like a kind of crisp ball level stuff, but you know, you got to aim higher, so. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So making the right read off pick and roll, whether that's like someone popping and finding them on a like a skip pass or whatever that is, making the right yeah. read. So yeah, it's almost like a playmaker. Um, cool. Uh, and then what's the end goal? I think you said earlier on, like you want to try and go to the NBA. Yeah, I, want, I want to go to the NBA. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's a that's what I wanted to hear. Um. So who? So you put up a quote on Twitter. I'm gonna throw it back at you. It said, uh, "Why, uh, why can I bear? Sorry, why can I bear? Can I bear anyhow? Yeah, anyhow. So that's it. Sorry, yeah, just butchered that. Sorry, so. So you said that he who has a why can bear anyhow. What's your why? My why is you know providing for my family. You know, just making the lead. Just Making everyone around me, just being able to pay back everyone who's helped me along the way, you know, That's just being able to give back to everyone. Like that, I like that. That's really good. Um, your most impactful coach so far in your journey? Oh, okay. That's so, tough. our most impact, no, it's not tough, but no? I've got three coaches that are most impactful. It's probably Adam Davies. From Canterbury and Jesse Sesson from Canterbury too, and wow. Billy, just everyone at Canterbury, because yeah, they just really just. I, I mean, I can't thank them enough for what they did. Like, wow. I mean, they just did everything for me. Like, when I was a kid, I didn't really appreciate what they were doing, but now I look back and it's like, what they did for me was amazing. Just everything. That's cool. I mean. It is amazing when you when you think what coaches do, they go out of their way for so many things and you can never really repay it almost. You're like, they just, they, they put so much effort into it. So yeah, that's yeah, good, yeah. That's a good shout out. I definitely wouldn't have invested so much in a skinny 12 year old who played football. <laughs> you know? Well, they obviously saw some potential. Look, at look, it's paid off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they had vision, they had vision. Um, okay, that's cool. Okay, next question, your prediction for, 
a couple of guys, uh, CJ Fulton, uh, Cameron Hildreth, and I never get a second name right, Aiden, who's gone to Louisville, uh, Aguijon, is it pronounced Aguijon? I actually don't know how it's pronounced. I haven't, I haven't ever said his name. I just say Aiden Harris, really. Aiden Harris, yeah, Aiden Harris. But CJ, I think he's got the potential to play high major, just like, because he, he already has the mind of a pro. Like, I think he's a pro right now. Cameron Hildreth, high major. I think he can be an NBA player. And Aiden, he's, he's probably going to be an NBA player too. If, I mean, if he gets a shot consistent as, a, as an NBA body, he he's kind of like, you probably even know him. He's a West Virginia player, Oscar, Oscar Sheboy. Uh, I had a look at their team, actually, and there's a couple of, yeah, I think he was on the list. He's a 6'7 guy, is he? He's, he's nine, unbelievably strong, like and quick as well. And I just feel like him and Aiden can be kind of the same. Like Oscar was supposed to go to the league this year, but he decided to stay another year in West Virginia. He's probably yeah. going to be. I think he's going to be first round next year. Wow. But I think okay. Aiden, could, Aiden could fit that mold very easily. Okay. Guess who I'm going to be watching next year? <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> um, so I'm going to keep a closer eye on stuff next year. Uh, I'm hoping Aiden can feature a little bit more. Uh, in Louisville now next year, so I'll be watching those guys as well. Uh, final question: Do you miss Ireland? The rain, the wind, the cold. <laughs> I mean, I just miss all my people. That's like yeah, that's it's it. It's always the way. Yeah, it's always the way. Because yeah. because yeah, because I lived in London for a long time, and I was like, I don't miss the crappy summers, but I do miss the people. You know? Yeah. And, they're nice people over there. Yeah. A bit of crack, like you just don't get it anywhere. You don't get it like enough. You don't. Get, you just don't get it anywhere else. Yeah, and, you, and nobody gets that until they go to Ireland. They're like, God, it's so much fun over Ireland. You're like, so that's that was how life was until you moved to the UK. And not to say the UK isn't fun. Some of my best mates are from the UK, but like it's just never the same kind of fun as when you're in in Ireland. Yeah. I think, from my opinion. Yeah. So I'm glad you felt the same way. Um, okay, cool. Listen, we're going to wrap it up. But uh, Sa thanks a million, Sam. That, that was me. I'm so proud of myself keeping to under an hour. <laughs> but uh, it's been amazing to have you on. I'm, I'm really excited to watch you. Um, you almost made me want to go out and train harder myself. You've inspired me to go out and train harder. So I think it's really impressive what you're doing. Um, and I, I, I honestly wish you the very best. Um, hopefully you come on again. Uh, who else would you like to see come on the podcast? Like maybe from your from your like the national team, like like the CJ. CJ is going to come. CJ. I don't know. Right. He's not a big talker, but it'd just be great to see him on an interview, man. Yeah, because he's really sh I'm like he's really kind of shy. But then like when I was messaging him like on a private, he was like, yeah, don't worry. Like maybe you don't want to play me one on one, like trash talking, like kind of joking. And I was like, <laughs> he's definitely got something to say. But uh, yeah. he's probably just shies away from. He's not like that into the whole like social media stuff. Or fair enough. Like, uh, what about Andy Okafor? Is he a good guy to get on? I think I was trying to read. Yeah, Andy. Andy's a great guy. We All actually right. live on the same block in the door. Ah, cool. Yeah. Okay. He's he's a he's a fantastic player as well. Yeah. From, from the, again, from the highlights I've seen. So. Uh, Okay, I'll right, see. Actually, if you can, could you message him for me? Because <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. If if you want me to, I'll, I'll send you a message. <laughs> I doubt he says yes, but if he does, then <laughs> all right. I'll bother him. I'll bother him until he comes on. All right. Um, all right. All right. So, um, listen. Uh, I'm trying to keep it to the to the, end of the hour. So, just to say thanks again for coming on. Um, and yeah, best of luck for for uh, for the upcoming whatever decision you make. I'm sure you make the right one. Um, and will you come on at, uh, in a year and chat to me about how you're doing? Yeah, of course, I will. Yeah, that's cool. awesome, buddy. Okay, well, listen, uh, thanks thanks again a million, and uh, yeah, take care, and and keep training hard. Keep, keep going out. All right, All right. keep it easy, buddy. Yeah. Let's go.